Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example is a little, a little bit more complicated. Notice we have variables in the numerator and we have a factor in front of the x squared term which makes it a little bit more difficult to factor. But again, we should start with factoring the two denominators so we can figure out what the common denominator is. So let's do that. The numerator stays the same and in the denominator we're going to have the product of two binomials. We can use the full method to help us with that a little bit. So in the front we have a 2, that means we need a 2 and a 1, or a 1 and a 2. And in the back here we have a 3, so that means we have a 3, 1, or 1, and 3. Now notice, uh, since we have a negative middle term, then we should have negative numbers here. So they, uh, they both need to be negative, because when you add them you get a negative in the middle, and you have a positive at the end, so when you multiply the two together, you get a positive result. All right, let's see here. To get negative 5, we go across like this. 2 times a negative 1 is negative 2. 1 times a negative 3 is a negative 3. When you add them together, negative 5. Bingo! We have the right combination right out of the gate, so to speak. So we're lucky on that one. Plugging that in, we have 2x minus 3, and we have 1x uh, minus 1. And that adds up to the correct 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. We subtract the second one from that, so we have 2x in the numerator divided by, again, we can use the FOIL method there. So we have a 2 and a 1, or a 1 and a 2. And in the back, notice we have a negative 3, that means we need minus 1 and 3, or we can a 9, minus 3 and a 1. We don't have to have all the combinations here because we already have all the combinations in the front. So let's try. What we need here is we need a negative 1 for the middle term. So 2 times 3, which is 6, and 1 times negative 1 minus 1, which is 5. That doesn't work. How about this with this? So we have 2 times 1, and 1 times the negative 3, which is negative 1, and that works. So this combination with this combination gave us the correct factors. So plugging that in, in the denominator we get 2x minus 3, and you multiply that times x plus 1. Okay, now we're ready to find the common denominators. Now notice again I did not leave enough space and I'm going to have to multiply some things together so I need a little bit more space. Now notice we have a 2x minus 3 for both denominators. We have an x minus 1 which is missing here and an x plus 1 which is missing here. Which means we're going to multiply this denominator by x plus 1 and we're going to multiply this denominator by x minus 1. Of course, when we multiply the denominators, we have to multiply the numerators with the exact same amount, x plus 1 and x minus 1. And so now you can see that we have a common denominator. We could write the difference of the two numerators over the same common denominator. So this can be written as x times x plus 1 minus 2x times x minus 1, all divided by the same common denominator, 2x minus 3, x minus 1, x plus 1. Now what we have left to do is multiply everything out and collect common terms. So this is equal to x squared plus x, minus 2x times x, which is minus 2x squared, minus 2x times minus 1, which is plus 2x, all divided by the same common denominator. Oh, that's a minus 3, x minus 1, and x plus 1. All right, collecting common terms. This is equal to, well, we have a minus x squared plus 2x plus x is plus 3x, all divided by the quantity 2x minus 3 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now, what we could do here is we could factor out a minus x. So this can be written as minus x times, when we do that we get x minus 3 divided by 2x minus 3, x plus 1, and x minus 1. All right, and that's the simplest form in which we can write it, which means we are done. That's how it's done.